we're here in La Crescenta, California, observing uh, Pinus colteri, Coulter pine, in big trouble. This tree is in deep decline. The decline spiral has been very rapid. This tree has faded in just a matter of a few weeks. It has gone from a few brown tips to now almost the whole tree has browned out. And so we're trying to explain just what happened here. We have several factors that could have ganged up on the tree. One is, of course, the long drought period that we've just passed through. We finally had some rain here in, in March, but we've had a very, very, very dry year, about one third our normal rainfall. And so that puts some stress here for the tree. The other issue was the station fire only a couple of years ago. Out of fear of fire danger, the tree has been pruned and in fact mispruned. As we look at the tree, we notice on the low fringe near the building, many, many of the lateral limbs have been interrupted with tipping cuts. And these are cut way back from the tip. They took off 12, 15 feet of the lateral leaders in the canopy of this pine. I've counted at least 30 significant tipping cuts on this one specimen tree. And so it's just too much, too many. This kind of damage, this kind of injury is the death cut. It was done in a panic, in a hurry to try to protect the building from the threat of the station fire. And so the tree was cut way away from the building, but it resulted in pruning cuts that the tree cannot cope with. We lose that meristem tip pump, the tree's vascular system dropped off dramatically, and it was not able to defend itself. The other factor that we have identified is there has been a street cut. A water main was put in about two and a half, three years ago, and there's a pretty significant street cut took place right across the root system of this tree, so we know there has been some root injury. The other factor that we have identified is pruning cuts that have been made associated with the power lines, and there's several tipping and heading back cuts as a result of that. So when we put all of these factors together, the pruning, the root damage, the drought stress, and the heat, the background heat of the station fire, all of these factors have ganged up on this tree and sent it into decline. This has only taken a few weeks for the first signs of decline to this dramatic browning out of the tree's crown. It's happened very, very rapidly. And now we see the tree in current condition very, very weak, browning out all over, and certainly looking more and more like a removal as we examine this tree. If we could roll back the hands of time, you could say, what could have been done to prevent this? And here's a list of the potential mitigations that could have been accomplished. Now, occasionally we do have to dig a trench near an established mature tree. And the strategy is to make the dig by hand. It is worth the trouble to dig the trench by hand. And if you find a big anchorage or feeder root that is supporting the tree, you simply go under it with your water main. This is why the hand dig is so valuable. Instead of excising a very large root system from the tree's vascular system, we are able to dig in such a way that we can preserve major lateral and anchorage roots on an established tree like this. You go down 24 or 30 inches, you're under the root system of the tree. So if we can preserve those really key important anchorage roots at the base of the root crown, if we can preserve those roots, this is the way to send a tree into the future. The impatience of the backhoe dig cause tremendous root damage. When you find a root with a backhoe, you've already ruined it. You have to make the dig by hand. And this is the key. If you have to head back a leader because it's in the power lines, it's better to take that lateral or that leader all the way back to the main stem so you're not leaving a stump in the tree. Roof clearance could have been accomplished without such an aggressive trim methodology. A little more care and caution could have been taken and this tree would still be alive. We can mitigate for drought periods by putting out additional water. Simply make it rain in the desert. When you know you've had a long, hot, dry period and the trees are showing some stress, wet it down out there all the way out to the drip line and beyond of your major important landscape trees. Keep them hydrated through the stress period until rains finally do come. So even with a native tree, we sometimes want to put out additional water to get a tree through a period of stress. And this is one way we could have mitigated on the decline spiral that this tree has gone through. 
There are very few options open to us now. If it were my tree, I might do one last ditch irrigation and just wet down around the tree's root zone and see if there's any hope of reviving the tree. When they brown out this dramatically, usually the decline spiral is not able to be interrupted. And I feel that in the case of this tree, this decline has been so rapid and so broad across the tree's canopy that it doesn't look like there's a hope of the tree's recovery. However, we give them every chance to recover if it's possible. We did have just now 2.88 inches of rain just a few days ago, so we have had a rehydration of the soil in this region, and it's possible that this will let a little bit of the stress off for the tree. But to lose this much needle, for this much needle to brown out all at once in this species, this is usually not decline that we can interrupt or turn around. We hold out hope to the very end. There's very little green healthy needle on board this tree now, so we feel that maybe this decline spiral is finally permanent wilt. The tree is not going to be able to come back. So mistakes in management and weather factors, injury to root system have resulted in irrevocable, irreversible decline.